Prince and welcome to The World Transformed. Tonight we're talking about young, thin, and healthy. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is a man who all three of those words apply to, Stephen Gordon. <laughs> How are you, How Stephen? How are you, Phil? Man, um, I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, of course, you never could be too young, too thin, or too healthy. That's the thing, right? So That's it's right. A, it's or a, too rich. We should have added rich to the, to the list. <laughs> to this those as are, well, yes. Those are all so, good things uh, to be. And this is a catch-up show for us because we've been, we've been doing an awful lot of kind of social, philosophical shows, and we've done a few shows that have touched on things going on in the physical sciences, but we've not done a show talking about big medical breakthroughs in a couple months anyway. And that used no. to be kind of a, a staple for us, so I thought, well, we'll just catch up here. We've got, uh, we've got some fairly good stuff going on in that area, and let's talk about it. So we're, you know, we're doing 15-minute shows now, so this is just going to be all the great stuff that's happening. Let's, let's jump right into it. I've got a story here. The Big Bang of Alzheimer's, Scientist ID, Genesis of Disease, Focus Efforts on Shape-Shifting Tau. So these tau proteins that make up Alzheimer's, they have figured them out, right? They've identified the point at which a healthy protein turns into a tau protein and starts going down the wrong road, and that is the degeneration that makes up the neurodegenerative disease that we call Alzheimer's. This is a huge moment, a huge moment in Alzheimer's research, and it has been accomplished. Well, it gives them a target, doesn't it? I mean, uh, this is the point at which uh, the... The healthy protein becomes toxic, but before the the tangles that uh, you know result uh, in the brain from you know tangled neurons or, or or whatever tangle they're referring to there. But it's so they can, if if they know that point, that, then perhaps it becomes a target for drug research, right? Exactly. Yeah. So a cure so, hasn't been found yet, but what they found is a is a potential thing to treat. Whereas before, all the treatments I can think of that have been mentioned for Alzheimer's have been somehow around trying to reverse engineer that tangle, trying to get that tangle to go away. And this is right. much better. Well, and, and much pretty better. much the treatment for the disease is just, you know, uh, trying to alleviate symptoms uh, or, yes. or to play down the symptoms and prolong the period of time uh, before it gets real bad uh, yes. for the patient. That's, that's, all, that's pretty much what the uh, – doctors can do for patients right now so it's it's a it's a sad thing and uh to see to see some hope that uh, hey we can maybe even uh somebody that's uh, gone down this road a little bit we, we've got a target where perhaps we can reverse the disease so that's that's the hope of the ultimate hope and uh potentially uh, so it's very exciting yeah. this is this is yeah this we're, is we're very early obviously in this process but uh that's that's some hope and that's and that's a good thing I think this will be viewed as a major turning point. And when Alzheimer's is routinely prevented, this will have been the thing that made that possible. Okay, next we've got new pill can reverse obesity and type 2 diabetes. This is actually a video that was on Facebook. It was uh, put up there by Hashim Al-Ghali. And how about this, a pill that works effectively the same as intestinal bypass surgery. I think maybe we've talked about this before. I'm not sure that right. this is entirely new news, but it's worth revisiting if you just want to follow the link and watch the video. It's a pretty good summary of what this drug does. It gets into your system, and it prevents your body from absorbing sugar. So we've talked lots of times about how sugar metabolism is the culprit in obesity and right. people go on low carb diets because they don't raise their glucose levels in their blood and they, they, they their bodies don't create fat because that's the trigger to create fat you eat sugar and your body gets the signal to create fat and you start getting fat this hey, goes uh, into with this you can put you can effectively put yourself on a low carb diet while enjoying a uh, a hot fudge sundae right i mean this uh um, Potentially, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it it slows or uh, or completely in some in some instances, I guess, uh, uh, eliminates uh, absorption of sugar within the gut, and that's a, a that's a big deal. Yeah, if probably it's better not to eat sugar. <laughs> let's let's go down the list of good ways to be healthy, right? Since the show is called Young, Thin, <laughs> yeah. and Healthy, probably the really good way to be healthy would be not to eat sugar. If you're thin and young yeah. now. 
don't eat a lot of sugar. That would be my advice to you. Right? <laughs> you're, 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 Let's say that you're, you're living in a world that uh, this pill is now uh, available and in and, and, and wide use. You probably could be as thin as a rail and have rotten teeth, right? Because you know, all, all you eat is uh, sugar. <laughs> That's uh, right. That's right. Probably, probably best for a lot of reasons to, uh, to uh, moderate that. Yeah. And, um, I mean, there's, there's general advice that I have as a person who's, who's struggled with obesity is if you're not fat, try to avoid getting fat. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's easier to avoid the pound than to get it off. That's for sure. Yeah. So if you're not eating a lot of sugar and you're young and thin, don't eat sugar. That's the, the old uncle with the cigarette in his hand telling you not to smoke. Right. That's me. I've, I've been pounding the sugar for decades and I'm telling you, don't go there. But, OK, <laughs> assuming there's people who have. And do as we say, not as uh, we do. We have done people. so much. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Assuming a population where people have eaten a lot of sugar and where, where actually uh, people's me- sugar metabolism gets damaged to the point where even if you eat protein, it spikes your glucose and you start putting fat on it. Right. I mean, that's what happens. There, to- there, are, there are methods by which your body can convert protein to sugar. So, yeah. Right. Um, and what do you eat on a low carb diet, well, you end up eating a lot of protein. So it, it starts to become a really, a really awful cycle that people get on. Well, here's a way out of the cycle, right? This is a good treatment, May, maybe less about enjoying a hot fudge sundae and more about finding a way to, to conquer obesity. Although I got nothing against hot fudge sundaes. Huh? This um, is a really, a really exciting thing, an actual treatment yeah. potentially for obesity and an actual treatment for type 2 diabetes that involves working on sugar metabolism um, it's working well in and, and, and non-invasive. There, there, a lot of people have had various surgeries to to help control their weight, and that's just. I mean, that's rough on the body, and uh, and, and and not easily reversible. And, and and nutrition becomes an issue for these people. They have to constantly be working to make sure they get the nutrition they need. Whereas this, I mean, if you're just taking a pill, you're basically saying, okay, today I've had the surgery, and the, the, the following day, well, I, 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 need, I need the sugar today or whatever. You know, you can, you can lay off the pill, and it, it's like you never had the surgery, right? So that's right. Uh, non, non-invasive, uh, completely reversible. That's the dream there. You can look at taking a pill. Taking a pill is not optimal. It's not the best thing in the world to have to do, and there's bound to be some side effects, and there's bound to be problems with taking a pill. But say what you will about it. It's less traumatic than having being That's cut right. open and, and having your, you know, your ha- half your digestive stomach system, system hacked water. into. Yeah, that's yep. that, that, that's a whole nother level of potential damage to the body. So very encouraging stuff, and it's working well with mice. So you know, as as we've established many times on the show, mice are just little humans. You know, waiting to prove uh, how, how we can how we can do <laughs> not at all. Not yeah, they're not. <laughs> I'm kidding. They're not. Mice yeah, are not little humans. Joke. But, but <laughs> it's, it's working well with them, so we're going to see in some human trials whether it works with people as well. So stay tuned on that one and watch the video. The video makes a nice, uh, makes a nice summary of that. Okay, how about this? How to eliminate cancer from our genome. This is a good video. This is also from uh, Hashem Al-Ghali. Uh, he, he gave a TED Talk on this. What it comes down to is preventing cancer by eliminating it in the embryo. He talks about the, a few simple things that can be done to human cells to make them essentially cancer-proof. And using CRISPR, we could do that, but you can't do it to an adult because you've got all these trillions of cells in the body. Who can you do it to? You can do it to a, a human embryo that's only eight cells or 16 cells or whatever it is at the, at the time that you apply the treatment. You can make those changes at that level, and then the result is a cancer-proof human being. And he talks very glowing terms about a future where we've eliminated cancer susceptibility from the species because everyone who's born, they just have this done first. Well, a couple of problems with this. One is we don't know what other consequences may result from tweaking these genes that we, do, that, that we have good reason to believe would make us cancer-proof. So it'd be like, ah, we're cancer-proof, but also we go crazy, right? I mean, <laughs> who yeah, knows what... Yeah. You know, what that, and that's the is. thing with our genome, Bill, is that one, one gene might do five things. Right. And so you alter that one gene to, to get some benefit, and lo and behold, uh, well, these people never have problems with cancer, but uh, they go crazy at age 30. Germline genetic engineering is a spooky thing. You, you better be sure that you got it right, and how can you be sure until you, two or three generations have passed? 
It's, right, uh, which means you've already done it to some human beings, right? Right. And right. that is a big, big step to take. So sounds good on paper. Theoretically, it's a great idea. How it gets implemented is unclear. So we're yeah. going gonna to have to step back. I think this is probably one of those areas where we'll see something like this implemented once we have really good artificial intelligence helping us to develop medical solutions, right? Really good right. machine learning and that kind of thing. Because if we can model this but, accurately. Yeah, yeah. If you can model it and actually show oh, 14 generations down, you know, we've, we've modeled 14 generations of the future. Uh, no um, unforeseen consequences that in this very thorough model that we have. We're going to try it with a few people. And, uh, and, and it also might be something we have to back into where yeah. if we, because I'm ready. If they want to, if they want to do CRISPR things to make me cancer proof, I'll take it. Right. But and, and it may be something you do with like a population and you say, okay, th these four people are going to Mars and need additional cancer proofing. Right. And, uh, yeah. and maybe you do something like that. I don't know. We're talking embryos, right? These four embryos. Right. Are going that's to Mars. true. That's, that's true. true. That's, you know, are, are we going to make that decision for this embryo that uh, you're going to Mars? That, that uh, sounds yeah. like the one where the Soviets won the Cold War, right? They, they might be, uh, you know, a totalitarian <laughs> state might be making those decisions, but I'm not sure yeah. that in an open Western society you could, be, you could be doing something like that. So I don't True. know. Either we figure out a way to do it to adults, which the whole thing is premised on you can't, or we have to be super, super sure before we do it for embryos. However... What I like about this is there, there is a pretty straightforward path to making a cancer-proof human being here. And yeah. we didn't used to have that, if, right? So. And uh, if, there's, if there's anything that we hate around here, it's cancer. If I could wave a wand and make everybody on Earth cancer-proof without driving them crazy or doing some other horrible thing to them, I would do it. It's a good conceptual step, needs a lot of work, stay tuned. As, as more work is done and as we find potentially other ways of approaching this, we'll, we'll keep talking about it. All right. Finally, these anti-aging pills seem to be actually working. Well, I wanted to give you an update, Stephen. You, you got me going on the NAD+. Plus. I've been on it for about a, less than a month now. If you're like me, it's too early to know. My own personal energy levels and stuff are so variable throughout the course of a year that, yeah, I'll need six months before I, sit, before I can look back and say, yeah, that really seems to have made a difference. But anyway, I'm in the game, all right? I'm in the game now. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm about six, seven months. No, actually a little farther into it than that. I'm probably more like nine months into it. And, and I will say I've, I've seen, seen a benefit. I've kind of been keeping track of, you know, sleep patterns and things like that and uh, being alert at work and things like that. These things seem to be working, and the ener energy level seems to be up. So, yeah. All right. Well, now here's this one. This is not the one yeah. we're taking, right? Right, uh, not NAD. So what are we talking about? Torque 1, okay, it right. has extended lifespan in every species studied to date, according to John Manick, who led the study for drug giant Novartis. Okay, so this is a drug that's supposed to make you younger. We got a pharmaceutical company testing it, so it's not a supplement like NAD+, okay, and it's not a drug intended for something else that people are now applying to aging, like metformin. This is a drug designed to to make you younger hailed as the first real anti-aging drug and it seems to be working at least on the, the critters they've tried it out on so far so here's once again Stephen, you predicted we were going to have real anti-aging starting around this time in history actually starting around 2015 and i think that that prediction has pretty much pretty much panned out but it continues right and now big pharma is involved which is I don't know, right. good and bad, I suppose, right? There's a, there's, there's yeah, I, I had said uh, 2015, and uh, that's about the time that NAD showed up. And now we've got Torque 1 here. Maybe this is Generation 1.5 or something like that, or, or maybe 2. The, the way this, these things tend to work uh, is that uh, you get very expensive interventions that do hardly anything at first, right? Right. But very quickly, it moves to interventions that do crazy good for you and cost very little and right. uh that's that's the way that's the trajectory on these things so well um, let me let me correct one we'll thing i said i get apparently this is a repurposed drug in the same way that metformin is because okay. what what this has been used for up to now is to give people 65 and older an an immune boost okay and it works ah, elderly people yeah. taking these drugs got about 40 percent fewer colds 
or bronchial infections. Almost as if they were younger. Yeah. Yeah, yep. exactly. How about that? About 264 about that? people got the drugs over six weeks and then were tracked for a year. So wait, I'm not entirely sure if they're repurposing or if they've actually developed this from whole cloth. This is over on technologyreview.com, and it's just a brief. So the, the origin of the drug remains obscure, but it has been tried on humans. How do you prove humans have gotten younger? That's a, that's a difficult one to establish. But an important right. marker here, you don't get sick, has been achieved. So it's it's. Pretty darn, pretty darn cool. Pretty good news there, I would say. And the meta news, of course, is that there are multiple strands of research going into anti-aging and results are being produced. So if you're interested in being young, thin, and healthy, I hope we've managed to touch on some good news for everyone. And certainly no bad news in this show. We got through a whole show without without touching any of the uh, 20% of our 80-20 Pareto good news, bad news. All right, well, this has been fun. We are going to be back on Thursday with a big end of summer, it's not really the end of summer, big summer geek out show. We're going to talk about summer movies. Look forward to that. Thank you all for being with us. And until next time, live to see it. Mm-hmm.